بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له أشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد الحمد لله All praises be to the Almighty God who has given us all the sustenance which we need. Alhamdulillah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam who are watching this uh, recorded Kulia Zuhur at Masjid Al-Falah on every Wednesday. So I would like to first thank all of you all to spend some time in watching my discussion about the topic Hadith or the subject Hadith. And inshallah we are still in Kitabul Jami' Fi Babil Adab We will continue our last week's discussion The second hadith Wa an Abi Hurairata radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Unzuru ila man huwa asfala minkum Wala tanzuru ila man huwa fawqakum Fahuwa ajdaru Alla tazdaru ni'matallahi alaykum Mutafakkun alih Neretan Abu Hurairah radiyallahu an Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Look at those who are less fortunate than you But don't look at those who are more fortunate than you So that you will not estimate You will not underestimate The favors Allah has bestowed upon you Agreed upon So mutafakun ali means this hadith been recorded by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim rahimahumullah ta'ala jami'ah. Okay, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. This hadith is actually Rasulullah SAW teaching us to appreciate, be thankful to the Almighty God who has given us all the sustainers and we strive even more for that. If you talk about health, We look at those who are less fortunate in health. When we look at them, which is us, falaminkum, look at those who are below us. He's not healthy, we look at him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him this health in this way. We are alhamdulillah. We are better than, our health is better than his. We feel appreciated. We will be Saying our thankful or showing our gratefulness to the Almighty God. If we look at those who are healthier than us, we will always say, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. And you will never say, Alhamdulillah. If we talk about our health, Alhamdulillah, we still can walk. Even though those who are sitting in a wheelchair, you still can move around. When you compare yourself with those who are bedridden, Allahu Akbar. Those who are bedridden, they can't move at all. They need someone. To do everything for them. So when we look at us, those who can walk. Now, after about two weeks, the mosque been closed. Most of us are missing the mosque. Alhamdulillah, this week, some mosques are opened with a small area. They have provided for a small number of about 20 jama'ah can pray separately, individually, pray by themselves. I believe when the mosque is opened, all of them will try their best, make an effort to pray as a congregational prayer in the mosque. If you can't pray every waktu in the mosque, at least one day once or one week once besides Jumaat prayer. Jumaat prayer, inshallah, every one of us, we will go to the mosque. But beside that, we make an effort. We bring our children. We make them live with the mosque. But it doesn't mean we pray only in the mosque. No, we can even pray at home. We can pray in our workplace as a jama'ah, as a congregational prayer. 
We can pray wherever because all the this the earth kullu ard all this earth is a mosque we can sujud uh, mosque not say mosque masjid which is a place we can sujud uh, that's what i'm referring to uh, but when we see mosque we can i'tikaf we can pray tahiyatul masjid so when one of the example where i can take this as when we walk to the mosque we go to the mosque Our weekends, we even go to the mosque to send our children for their weekend madrasa classes. So we talk about the health. Another thing, when we talk about knowledge, we don't look those who are higher than us. Then we will be saying that, sorry, we don't look those who are lower than us for knowledge-wise. Then we will be saying that, Alhamdulillah, my knowledge is enough. We should look people who are higher than us in knowledge, where it give us a strong encouragement. For us to seek knowledge. For us, if you talk about Islamic knowledge, we must seek until to our last breath. Because there are a lot of things we need to learn. We must be equipped with a lot of knowledges in Islam so that we are able to practice, we are able to follow the era. Issues comes, we are able to accommodate, we are able to practice. Insha'Allah. So this is what, and whatever, when we appreciate, inshallah, we will always be saying, Alhamdulillah. The word Alhamdulillah means, all praises be to Almighty God. Even now, we are breathing. At night when we sleep, when we wake up in the morning, Alhamdulillah. We are able to move, we are able to see, we are able to talk, we are able to walk to the toilet, to release ourselves. Some of them, when they open their eyes, they see only darkness. Either they are still alive, but they are blind, or they are dead. Inna lillah, which is they are in the grave. They open their eye. It's very dark. So that way we say, Alhamdulillah. We say our thankfulness to Allah SWT. Some of them will do sujud syukur when they hear some good things. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Man la yashkuri nas la yashkurillah." When a person who does not say thank you to his brother, he will not be thankful to the God. Which means, even a small matter, when someone helps us, we have this manner of telling thank you. Or in Arabic, normally we see people say shukran. It is good if a person. Who can replace the word shukran with jazakallah khair al jaza or jazakallah, which means may Allah reward you. It's a du'a. The reply by wa'iyak. May Allah award you too. This is how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. But if we don't use the word jazakallah, use the word shukran, no problem. It's better if you can use the word jazakallah, because there's a hadith which taught by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we look at this. If a small thing, even a small kid, even our son who is five years old, six years old, or maybe ten years old, he helps us to take something, and he or she will be expecting a small thank you from us. But sometimes we forget, and he says that, "Father or Abba, why do you say thank you?" They say, "Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry." So you see. A simple thing when someone do, even it is our wife, maybe our wife cook for us, we say thank you. It's a simple thing, and you can see the happiness on her face. For example, when the husband comes back home, the husband buys something. When the wife, when the son, when the kid says thank you, you can see the smile on the husband. Why? Things has been appreciated. So this kind of small things, when we start to say thank you to our fellow. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter, Muslim brothers sisters or non-Muslim brothers sisters. A small thing, a person who hold the leaf for us when we are walking in, uh, whether it's a long time or short time view takes, but they hold the leaf for you. Even you are leaving, they hold the leaf open button, they press it for you. You say a simple thank you, you can see the happiness on their face because you appreciated their help. So that's why, even small things, we can say thank you to a human being. We will not hesitate, and our mouth is very light to say, 
Alhamdulillah to Allah SWT, even a small thing. Not only for the big thing. Big thing for sure. But when a small thing, a small thing I can tell you all is every day we wake up in the morning. We ask ourselves, do we always in the morning when we wake up, the first thing we say, Alhamdulillah, we ask ourselves and we answer ourselves. Second, after we release ourselves, we relieve ourselves, big business, small business, after we finish our shower, maybe after we finish everything in, inside our heart, did we say Alhamdulillah? Because if Allah did not permit, without His permission, if the Najis did not release from our body, what will happen to our health? After that, we take our breakfast. After we eat, we say Alhamdulillah. Why? Because Allah SWT gave us food which suits our throat, our tongue and our stomach. Some of them, unfortunate, those who are having cancer, cancer patient, normally stage 4, whatever they eat, they vomit. Even one small piece of rice, they vomit. They cannot eat at all. Even a sip of water, so they cannot drink. So when you compare your, compare ourselves with them, we will say, Alhamdulillah. Even we are sick sometimes, we can take one or two tablespoons of porridge. But that group of people, they cannot take at all. So that's why I say, we feel Alhamdulillah. Even what food we eat is halal and ta'iban, we feel appreciated. So that's why I say, Man la yashkuri nas la yashkurillah. Whatever food we get, Alhamdulillah, appreciate, feel thankful. Thank to the person who cook for us. Thank for the person who buy for us. Then followed by, we will be very easy, enlightened. Our mouth is very enlightened to say, Alhamdulillah to Allah SWT. And those who did not appreciate his nikmat. Nikmat means, Whatever things he has given us, which he knows, because Allah says, "La yukallifu Allah nafsan illa wusaha." He will not burden his servant. He will give what he or she can take it. So Allah swt give us everything, even the test also. He knows what suits that person. Maybe I can only go through fifty percent, so he give that level. But sometimes when you look at someone. We will say, Alhamdulillah, Allah give me this level of test. Even even during test time also, we can say the word, Alhamdulillah. Even some of us, now, I can relate with this COVID-19 virus. Some of them, they get quarantined. Some of them, maybe, uh, for some other reasons, maybe their family members, just suspected, maybe they also have to stay at home. Sometimes they'll be grumbling around, making noise. I understand. But Alhamdulillah, Allah still love you, the God still love you and make you stay at home rather than you go out, things get worse. Either you get affected or you spread to others. So you say, Alhamdulillah, that, that's a nikmat. If you think positively, maybe Allah SWT before this, you did not have any rest at all. But this is the time where Allah SWT make you rest well at home. Take a break. So when we look things positively, inshallah, we will see things positively and we always say, Alhamdulillah. Where all of us, we memorized the six pillars of faith. And one of the pillars is Allah's good and bad. Qadar and Qadar. So this is a Qadar and Qadar. So when we take, we practice this. This is the time where we practice back what we have learned. So when you look it, we sit down. We reflect back and we say, Alhamdulillah. Ah. There, will, there is a wisdom behind everything which Allah SWT do or does. So here comes for this hadith. If his servant who did not appreciate, who did not appreciate his ni'mah, bersyukur, who did not thank Allah, always grumbling, always says not enough. Except for knowledge, if you say not enough, you go out, you want to add, uh, add on, you want to increase your knowledge. Alhamdulillah, that's a good thing. But your intention must be, Lillahi ta'ala, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because of, you want to show off to others. 
Not because I want to have this level. Maybe I want to have master, I want to have PhD. So that I want to show people. Then, where is your niat? Your niat is wrong. Everything is gone. Allah Rasulullah SAW says, Inna mala malu bin niyati wa inna mali kulli mrin manawa. All your actions are based on your intention and all the reward which Allah wants to give you is based on your intention. Mm. When your action you are going as a talabal ilm is a good, but your intention is wrong, then your reward is gone. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, always we correct our intention and always we appreciate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ibrahim, Verse 7, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim, Wa idh ta'adhana rabbukum la in shakartum la azidannakum, Wa la in kafartum inna azabi la shadid. Surah Allah azim. Which means, and remember, when your Lord proclaimed, if you give thanks by accepting faith and worshipping none but Allah, I will give you more of my blessings. But if you are thankless, verily, my punishment is indeed severe. So see, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah SWT says, if you feel thankful to what Allah SWT has given us, inshaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase it. Allah will not decrease anything which his servant appreciate and rebel. But if his servant did not appreciate, always say not enough. If really not enough, that is different story. But too greedy, for example money, Alhamdulillah is enough. But he says, no, I'm not enough. He want more. He want more. He want more. Then Allah SWT will stop giving his nikmah. If Allah stop, there is one of the inna azabi la shadid. There is in this, this world. The year after, yes, his azab is there. But in this world, how Allah will give? Allah may stop the sustenance which he's providing to the person. Na'udhu bila min thalik. We don't want to be in that category, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. As long as if we ourselves and we reflect ourselves, we have a lot of sins. But we see Allah SWT still loves us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us what we ask when we raise up our hand. We ask Him in the dua. Allah SWT provides. He answers. Maybe not everything on the spot, but at least one. Maybe after a few months, he answered the another one. Maybe after a year, he answered the another one. Maybe a few years later, he answered. See how he loves his servants. But we as his servants, we need to appreciate. We need to feel thankful. I'd like to share one story of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That one day, he was performing his tahajjud prayer. He prays every night until his feet was swollen. Both of his foot was swollen. When Sayyidatina Aisha radiallahu anha asked him, Oh Rasulullah, why are you performing your tahajjud prayer, your night prayer until your both feet are swollen? Allah has promised you the paradise. You confirm you will be entering paradise. Why are you still striving so hard? The reply from our beloved Prophet Wasallam, peace be upon him, said, Can't I be a thankful servant to my God? I can't show my thankfulness to my God. Allah Akbar. We ask ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if we are been promised entering paradise, will we be striving so hard? I can tell you definitely the answer will not be yes we will not be striving because we know the answer but our beloved prophet peace be upon him he knows where his place but he still strives his best he prayed because he recites long surahs in tahajjud 
we recite maybe surah kausar inna antaina kal kausar and the second second rakaat we we recite ikhlas qul wallah wahad but prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not he recite long surah surah ali imran surah nisa until his foot was solid so you see how a prophet show his thankfulness so this how my dear brothers and sisters in islam so in this sharing session for today for this when uh, wednesday school year zohor is always we feel our thankfulness we show thankfulness to the almighty god who has created us by saying alhamdulillah we can extend to do a sujud syukur alhamdulillah but if not always we say alhamdulillah and remember to say jazakallah khairal jaza to the person who helped you and for our non-muslim brothers and sisters who have helped us we say a simple thank you and with a simple smile which was taught by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was not saying that uh, no it's a small thing why must i say or oh, this person must do and we show be kind be good to others show kindness uh, when we do good to people inshallah that good thing will come to us people do good to us remember so the conclusion of this hadith is we look at those who are less fortunate than us in order for us to always feel thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we look those who are above us for everything then we will never say thank you to Allah we never say alhamdulillah we say not enough not enough not enough except for knowledge knowledge wise we look at those who are above us so that we will say that i need to strive harder to gain more knowledges to help yourself and to help everyone who's around us but if we look at those who are lower than us in knowledge wise we will say alhamdulillah what i'm having now is enough ha huh. so only for knowledge wise is reverse but other than that we look at those who are lower than us in a way that we will be always saying alhamdulillah and we will always extend our help to help others because the needy ones they need our assistance always we must be there that's why in islam we have zakat ruling if not people will not be giving up and the needy is always a needy so that's why we are always there to extend our help in what way we can help them wallahu alam bisawa so that is today's sharing session inshallah allah wills we will meet again next week inshallah let's we close this session i would like to thank everybody for have uh, for sparing some time in listening in my sharing section and if there's any shortcoming in my this sharing section by pronouncing words or any other things i seek forgiveness and let's we end this session by reciting surah al-fatiha and a short dua may allah subhanahu taala save all of us from this virus and may allah subhanahu taala remove this virus from us as soon as possible wa ala hadini ala hadini tasalli al-fatiha a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdinas siratal mustaqim siratal ladzina an'amta alaihim ghairil maghdubi alaihim waladdallin amin بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله مغفر لنا ذنوبنا ولوالدينا ورحمهما كما ربيانا السخارة ولجميع المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمن والمؤمنات الأحياء من العموات اللهم إن نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجثام ومن سيء الأسقام اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك الجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك النار اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى العفاف الغنى اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا ولم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وحبلا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما اللهم لا سهل الا ما جلت سهلا وانت تجل حزنا اذا شئت سهلا 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك أتوب إليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم العصر إن إنسان في خصل الذين من وعمل الصالحات وتوصل بالحق وتوصل بالصبر أقول قبل هذا واستغفر الله لازم لي ولكم وبالله تلف والهداية والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته